Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my proposed future Japanese tank Tetris series or well, actually the last episode in the series uh, um, today we're dealing with premium tanks of which there aren't that many but um, you know there is a decent amount there um, now I should point out I'm going to be a little bit rushed through this because I'm actually going on holiday in a few hours so I do apologise if it's a little bit rushed um, I should be coming back about Monday-ish time so I should start to be able to put videos up again around about then. Uh, might be able to get one out on Sunday if I'm lucky. This one should be coming out on Friday, hopefully. This, I'm actually recording this on the Thursday. Um, also the 100 subscriber um, special. I've got to think of something to do with that. Uh, almost at 100 subscribers. Uh, it's all crept up on me. Um, but yeah, that's all the news and introduction. So let's get straight into the episode. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Now the first tank we're looking at is the Renault FT-17, although I've also heard it being referred to as the ft Co in um, Japanese service. Now this was a French tank, but it was imported by the Japanese. Um, in my Japanese tanks book by Zaloga, uh, quoting from the book, a small number of tanks were acquired for trial purposes, starting with a single British Mark IV in o October 1918, followed by about six British Medium A Whippet tanks, and 13 French Renault FT tanks in 1919. It then goes on to say the first tank units were formed in 1925 with five Renault FTs being deployed with the first tank detach detachment of the 12th division. Now I haven't mentioned the Whippets or Mark IV in my tech tree because one the Whippets were only armed with machine guns and the Mark IV was a huge uh, tank that I, well, it had those sponsons on the side. It was basically like the original World War One tank, whereas the FT-17 has a turret, a decent gun, all that sort of stuff. Now, as far as I'm aware, they were mostly used for training, although I have heard some references to them being used in um, China. Now, these were quite similar to the um, ordinary FT-17s, from what I understand, uh, armed with the 37mm cannon, um, which had about... 27 millimeters of penetration with an M1916 round or 31 with a M1927 as far as I'm aware they're both armor piercing rounds doesn't say what range that is so it's not the greatest of penetration but again for a you know tier 1 tank that's kind of okay but really it would only be limited to against um, reserve tier tanks um, it would only be effective against reserve tier tanks sorry um, armor isn't that great, 8 to 22 millimeters. Um, it's kind of better than the T26, that's 15 millimeters all around, but I think it's outclassed by the frontal arm of the Panzer II and the M2A4. Um, speed, what's the speed? As far as I'm aware, it's about 4.7 miles per hour. Um, quoting from the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Military Vehicles, um, very specific speed. And it had a crew of two, I'm assuming the driver and the gunner. Um, so where would this be tier-wise? Uh, tier 1, obviously, and battle rating 1. This would have to be pretty much a reserve tier um, tank. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's an okay for a reserve tier tank, but it wouldn't be that great. But I also think it would be a very interesting premium. Because, um, you know, it's a tank. It, was, it is a foreign tank, but it was used by Japan. So hopefully there shouldn't be any problems with it. And I hope it does get added as a Japanese premium. Now the next tank is the Renault NC-1, or apparently in Japanese service it was called the Renault Otsu Gata. Now again from Zaloga, well the Japanese tanks book by Zaloga, 10 of these were ordered because um, the Type 89 wasn't in production until 1931, so these were ordered in 1930. Now from what I understand they had I think three crew members and they were quite mechanically unreliable. Um, again according to the book by Zaloga, they were used at the Shanghai incident, but um, the, sus the suspension of the Renault NC-1 was troublesome and the type was retired. Um, this is actually a picture of a Swedish vehicle which was also sold uh, around the same time. This is actually a sort of prototype of the Renault um, D1, uh, but this is this has got a different turret. I believe it's got the same turret as the FT-17, so presumably it's going to have the same gun. Which um, makes a bit of a problem for tiering, because it's got, okay, not a, a good, not particularly a great gun. But it did have around, I think, 6 to 40 millimetres of armour. Um, when I thought it was on the Char D2 medium tank, presumably the D1 and the NC1 um, would have similar armour. I've heard 40 millimetres for the NC1, so that must be roughly right. And apparently it could do about 11.6 miles an hour, or the, the D1 could, but again, prototype should be able to do roughly the same. Um, it's actually got better armour than the... Oh, it's got almost similar armour to the M3 Grant. 
slightly better armor than the early models of the Panzer III and Panzer IV, and I think inferior to the T-50, which is um the on the Russian tree. Oh, it's got the same as the T-50 on the Russian tree. So where would this go? It would have to go at tier one because you know it's still got that really bad gun, but battle rating wise, 1.3, 1.67 at the very highest. Um, because that gun's just going to be a massive liability. But I think it would be a nice little tank, and you know it should do very well. And I think it would be a very good premium. And again, like the FT17 was actually used by the Japanese in quite largest numbers. Now the next vehicle is a captured vehicle or a captured M3 Stuart, and I know some in the War Thunder community have an absolute hatred for captured vehicles, but um, this type of vehicle is captured on a few occasions, so it's not like a one-off or anything. Um, reading again from my book by Saloga, which you know I'll probably be doing for most of this episode, if I can just find it. Yeah, quote in from the book: Two Shinoto Chihars took part in the Kurigador landing, along with one captured M3 light tank commanded by the detachment leader. Major Matsuka, um, unquote, and then later on when talking about Burma, it says, uh, saying the only armour the Japanese committed to Burma was the 14th Tank Regiment, which had remained since the 1942 campaign. It was so poorly equipped that its 4th Company used Stuart Light Tanks captured from the remaining, sorry, from the retreating British 7th Armoured Brigade in 1942. The fact it was used by a detachment leader um, at Corregidor and the fact it says Stuart Light tanks when talking about the 4th Company in Burma implies that you know quite more than a few were captured and you know it wasn't just a one off thing. Luckily for us um, when we're talking about stats all we have to do is go over to the game itself and look at the in-game M3 Stuart. Now here's the American tech tree and I believe it's the M3 Stuart not the M3A1 that was captured or at least um, that I'm suggesting because uh, this was in production from April to August of 1942, uh, the M3A1 that is, uh, which is before the, or after the Battle of Corregidor, which was where uh, Major Matsuka used an M3 light tank, so presumably it would have been an M3 Stuart already produced and already stationed on the island. So let's take a look at it. Um, decent armour, 38mm at the front of the hull and turret, 25mm everywhere else. Uh, lower glacis is around 30 3 or 30 because of sloping, except around the machine gun port where it's about 15. Uh, it's got four crew members, battle rating of 1.3. I think this would be a nice little Japanese premium. I know people don't like captured premiums, but this one actually makes sense because it was captured in somewhat large numbers. It was used in combat, unlike, unlike some of the other ones, such as the um, Japanese B-17. And overall, I think it would be a nice little Japanese premium. Now the next tank on the tech tree is the Type 3 Kiri, and I really wasn't sure whether to include this, which is why I've put it bolded and underlined. Now at first I didn't have much of a problem with it. Um, there wasn't any information in my books, but um, there was quite there was a little bit of information on it online, and more importantly, there was a photo of it at the Kabinka Tank Museum in Russia. However, I noticed something a bit odd about the photo. This is the Type 3 Kiri, and this is the Type 4 Kinu. Now the Type 4 Kinu was basically a variant with uh, Type 97's 57mm gun put on it. The Type 3 Kiri is basically a proposed model with a 57mm gun as the main armament, but in the existing turret, or in a new turret. Now the difference between this Type 4 Kinu picture and the one of the Type 3 is um, this does, the Type 4 doesn't seem to have uh, headlights and it's got some different markings on the turret, um, but they look to be almost the exact... Well, they, pretty much are the exact same tank. They're, in, they're even in the same spot, you've got the same two windows behind it. So I don't know if the Kabinka Tank Museum has got a bit confused or if I've got something wrong or I don't know. Um, but basically, from what I understand, this would be quite similar to the regular Type 95, uh, except with the 57mm gun, which um, we've discussed before has pretty bad penetration, except with um, high explosive anti-tank, which I believe gave it around 55mm of penetration. Armour I'm guessing is going to be similar to the Type 95, 12mm on the whole turret front, turret side and hull side, as well as the turret and hull rear, uh, 9mm on the top and bottom, uh, probably a speed of about 18 miles per hour still. I don't know if the crew changed when um, adding the new gun, but I've heard it wasn't a very good design, so I'm guessing it was probably same crew, um, probably a bit cramped. Uh, what barrel rating would I put this at? I believe I said the Type 4 Kinu, which was quite similar to this, would have been battle rating of 2, maximum of 2.3, 
uh, this should probably be about 1.7 to 2 with being the max because it's got the same gun but it seems to have the you know it's got the, a similar turret to the type 95 so quite bad armor still i think it would be a nice tank to have in the game although like i said there's a lot of confusion about it um so that's probably not going to help much while looking for documents on it but um it would be nice if it could be added in um i hope it could be added in i think it would be a nice little tank for the japanese now the next tank on the list is the type 97 chinai or chinee um I hope I pronounced it right. Um, again, can't actually show the pictures of it, but I will link to where you can find them. Basically, uh, when they were looking for a new medium tank, the Japanese had two choices, the Chiha and the Chinese. Uh, but basically, the I believe the um, war with China started, and so they went with the Chiha, which um, or Chiha, which was more expensive, but, you know, superior. Whereas the Chinese would have been good for a peacetime, you know, they might have chosen it during peacetime because it was cheaper and, you know, not quite as effective, but still pretty good. Um, it was a bit slower, something like 5 miles per hour slower, had about the same armour, had one less crew member and one less machine gun. And not a bad tank, and I believe um, there was some discussion about having it as a uh, light tank, but that never happened for whatever reason. Um, I think it'd be a nice little... Uh, medium tank. The armour, like I said, was about 8 to 25 millimetres, 19 miles per hour top speed on road, uh, the same 57 millimetre gun, so something like 55 millimetre penetration with high explosive anti-tank. I think it'd be a nice little premium tank for the Japanese. Now, what battle rating would I put it? Uh, I think I said with the Type 97 Chiha, it was about, I said about 2 roughly. Uh, this could probably be about the same battle rating, 2, possibly 1.7 on account of the uh, one less crew member uh, and the less, um, you know, the slower speed. But I think it'd be a nice little premium. Um, there should be information on it um, since you know it was put up for tender and actually tested and everything. So I think it'd be a nice a little tank for the Japanese to have as a premium. Now the next few vehicles, the Panzer Three J, Panzer Three N, uh, Tiger One, and Panther, I'll be showing in War Thunder itself. Now according to my book by Sloga, Japanese tanks 1939 to 1945. Uh, quoting from the book, Germany sold Japan a pair of Panzer III's in 1943, one with the 50mm gun and one with the short 75mm gun, but by the time they arrived in Japan they were already obsolete. Now the 75mm gun version is probably the Panzer III N, which we've already got in game as a premium, um, but the 50mm is a little bit harder because it could be either a Panzer III F, J, J1, L or M. Now I did try to look up what ship would have um, brought them to Japan, but I couldn't really find any information. Um, thankfully, I have got a book called Yanagi, which deal by Mark Felton, which um, deals with Japanese and German trade during the war, mostly submarines, but it does deal with the freighters that would have um, probably delivered the tanks as well. And looking through the uh, books, there's only really three that could have possibly done it, um, or two really: the Osorno and the Alsterufa, Aus which um, both left in 1943. There was also the Re Regensburg or Regensburg, but that was um, torpedoed in 1942 and patched up by the Japanese. So presumably uh, it wouldn't have been delivering the Panzers if it was um, if they were bought in 1943. Now we we'll look at the Panzer III N first because that's probably the tank that was um, referred to when talking about the 75 mm gun tank. Um, as you can see, it's got um, okay armor, 50 on the front and rears uh, of the hull. Turrets 30, 30, 57. There is actually um, this bit 20mm plate on the front, which I don't think is counted in the usual hull armour, so it's probably around 70 really. Uh, five crew members, uh, battle rating of 3, same gun as the Panzer IV, so 100mm penetration with the uh, heat. I've, again, should be about that battle rating for the Japanese, probably. Um, and I think it would be you know, a good tank, because um, it was actually taken to Japan and tested by them. Um, you know, maybe in an alternate history map you can say they produced it themselves. For the Panzer III with the 50mm gun, I'm not sure. I've, I've heard a few people discussing on the internet saying it was the long barreled one, but I don't know where they're getting their sources from. It would probably make sense for Japan to get the most modern one they could buy. Um, but really, it should have a, about the same crew for all of them. So, so about 5 crew, but battle rating could be anywhere from 2.3 to um, 3.7. It uh, just depends which one they got, really. Uh, I'm going to take a punt and say it was the Panzer III J1 they received. 
Although really, I don't think even the Panzer 3L or 8-3M are that different apart from the side skirts. And uh, yeah, they're all about the same size. Or they're a bit heavier than the Panzer 3J. I've uh, got roughly the same armour, a little bit heavy on the hull. Uh, they've all got the same gun, so really it could it, dep it could be any of these three tanks, I'd think. Um, so anywhere battle rating from 3.3 .3 to 3.7. Uh, you know, I think they'd be nice, you know, whichever one it is, I think it would be good for the Japanese, because again, they did actually receive it, and they, okay, they may not have used it in combat, but they did, you know, get it and test it, presumably. So I think it'd be nice little premium, the two Panzer Freeze. It's just a shame I can't actually confirm which one it is. I'm going to try and do a little bit more research into it, see if I can turn something up, and, you know, I'll let you know if I find anything. Now, the next two tanks I was also a bit unsure about, the Panther D and the Tiger tank, uh, presumably a Tiger E. Two of these were bought by the Japanese in 1943. Unfortunately, by this point, point in the war the surface um, blockade runners were you know it was a suicide mission to try and ship something to Japan by boat so they were donated back to the German army I believe I, I think they got ripped off with the Tiger from my understand they paid some like 600,000 Reich marks when it was on like 300,000 um, but they donated them back to the German army I think the Tiger was lost in France uh, I don't know about the Panther but um yeah, not really much to say. Uh, the Panther's battle rating of 5.7. The Tiger E's a battle rating of 6. Um, and if it was the H, it would be 5.7. I don't think there's too much difference apart from a little bit of armour difference on the roof. Uh, the Panther D has... Uh, see how many crew it is. Has... Five... Is it five crew? Five crew, and it's got quite a lot of armour. So that would do quite well for Japan. You know, it'd be quite different to what they usually have. Um, should do pretty well. Um, good speed as well, I believe. 34 miles an hour. Good gun. Very, very good gun. Uh, with um, stock ammo, is 158 millimeters at 100 meters. 121 at 1,000. And the Tiger E. I'm I'm gonna assume it's the E, but um, again, not too different from the F anyway. The H anyway. Sorry. Um, again, five crew. Uh, very good armor. Um, Japan doesn't really have any tanks with really thick armour, I don't think. Um, oh, a bit of a weakness around the viewing port, apparently, in the machine... Oh, not the machine gun port, but around the viewing port. Very good gun. Um, again, with stock ammo, 125 at 100 metres, 105 at 1,000. Um, OK top speed, 28 miles an hour. I think these would both be very good for Japan. The reason I've bolded and underlined them is because Japan didn't actually receive them. They may have tested them in France, but they never actually had them. They never got them back to Japan. Um, so I think they should be added, but I've bolded and underlined just in case. Um, you know, I was a bit unsure about them, but I think the German tanks would all, you know, all of the German tanks would be very good premiums for the Japanese as they were either bought and used, or at least bought and, you know, were going to be used if, but uh, couldn't be because they didn't get them back to Japan. So that's it for today's episode and for the proposed Japanese tank tech tree series as a whole. I'm actually going to move on to the French one next, but apparently that's now going to become an international tech tree, so I'm going to have to work out how to do that. Um, summing up the Japanese tech tree, I, their light tanks are a bit under-armoured and they do suffer with armour in general, really, but I think they have a decent um, bunch of tanks and vehicles. I think they will be able to hold their own, given a, a decent battle rating. Uh, I think Japan's got a lot of tanks and vehicles to choose from. Um, of course, Gaijin and viewers of this may disagree where to put tanks or what tanks to be included, but I think there should be enough vehicles for Japan to have a viable tech tree. I mean, well, there's definitely enough for a viable tech tree. But I think they could really thrive in the tank side of things. Um, I'm actually packing to go on holiday at the moment, so I'll have to cut this short a little bit. Um, again, I won't be here for the next few days, so uh, I'll be putting this up on Friday, possibly a video Sunday. I should be back on Monday or Tuesday at least. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, leave a like if you like these sorts of videos. Subscribe if you like these sorts of videos. Uh, leave feedback, could always do for more feedback. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.